We're live. All right. Cool. Who's ready to rock and roll? All right, my barbecue loving friends, uh, Arnie Tex here. We are back uh, with another live and an interview with a good friend of mine, uh, Lyndon Thomason from Corpus Christi. Super cool dude, uh, excellent cook and uh, content creator. He makes YouTube videos, TikTok videos, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I don't know if he's on any other platforms. He must have uh, some really good skills. Uh, one of the things I like to about Lyndon, about Sapo Barbecue, what's up, Sergio, is that he always has like the right music, man. I, I struggle myself trying to pick the right music. So uh, we're going to pick his brain a little bit today, see how he does it. I know there might be some of you out there that maybe want to do your own stuff uh, or are, or maybe are already doing it and need a little uh, guidance or help. Maybe uh, Linda can help us both out. I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys that are uh, watching today. Hello, Oscar. Mark Scrog, my friend. Kyle, good to see you guys. Uh, thank you to everybody that, you know, follows our pages and our channels and our platforms and that sends us messages and Lots of love and hearts and all that good stuff. Uh, thank you guys very much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, our, our hearts uh, and our minds and our prayers go out to, once again, to everybody in Uvalde, uh, to all the families that are affected. That's a really, really sad situation. Uh, and uh, we're praying and hoping that uh, everything turns out good in the long run over there. Hopefully, um, you know, the things get better for everybody and, and, and for this country. Man, that's a kind of a crazy deal. But um, anyway, guys, uh, uh, definitely our hearts and our prayers go out for those folks over there. Um, we'll talk some more about that later. But for now, let's try to get in here with Mr. Sapo and uh, see what's going on with him. I'm fixing to add him on. If you guys have any questions about, you know, video or camera or YouTube or, or content creation, he can probably tell you. He's pointed me in the right direction a couple times with different things. Uh, he also uh, has a, a YouTube and everything else. All right, guys, I'm going to get rolling here because I tend to ramble a little too much. So let's add Sapo back in. What's up, Mr. Sapo Barbecue, Lee Thomason? Oh, just enjoying the great outdoors in this South Texas heat. <laughs> nice, nice, man. That's awesome. I like your shirt, bro. Yeah, some guy from the Valley sent this to me. I, I <laughs> couldn't figure out who he was. <laughs> and yeah, no. now, now we know. <laughs> I should have hey, got a uh, 2X, so look. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. I, I feel your pain on that for yeah, sure. Y'all yeah. um, bear with me. It's my first time using this laptop uh, for the live stream, so hopefully I can read the comments. Uh, what's up, Patrick? We got Oscar Rivera, Mark Scrubs, Kyle. We got a bunch of guys in here already, man. Pretty cool. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them here. And uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Sapo Barbecue. There's James Pavia. What's up, James? Haven't seen you in a while, bro. Um, thanks for joining us. Patrick, thanks for joining us. Oh, here we go. H-Town. And um, Goya Gonzo says, I have a salsa business in San Antonio. Would love for you to try it. Are you asking me or are you asking Sapo or both of us? Hey, Sapo, I think we're going to get some free salsa out of that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, hit us up in the message uh, and uh, I'll be happy to give you my address. I like, I love salsa. That's one of my favorite yeah. things to eat pretty much every day. Sapo, how are you doing in Corpus Christi, sir? Oh, very well. So other than the drought, it's pretty nice. Um got a good breeze this evening it was kind of still this morning but i'm over here in my i call this the barbecue corral because uh, uh -huh. even though i'm not out in the country i'm in a neighborhood right right but i used old deck when a uh, covid first hit my wife got laid off uh -huh. and we were home and i had a pile of deck wood and i just thought to myself you know what i'm gonna make a little place man nice. and i just sawed everything went crazy and it turned out really nice man she likes right. me staying way over here. It's far away from the house. <laughs> yeah, I look at, I, I see it when, you, when you're there and you kind of move your camera around. It looks pretty good, man. It really does. It's okay. Yes, sir. Okay. It looks nice. Very nice. It's getting um, evening, so I don't know. It's it's about, what, seven, seven o'clock. So yeah, it's, it's seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Should be right okay. Now. 
We got a guy yeah. all the way from uh, Canada watching us today. Uh, thank you for oh, joining yeah. us. Uh, yeah, I, Glenn, think, Glenn, I think she's Glenn my Lee. friend. Yeah. Canada, nice, very nice. Um, thank you. Uh, Noe Escobar de Leon, Texas Thick Burner Man. Yeehaw, in the house. Thanks for joining us, brother. Ray Rodriguez, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Rene, Rene Quintero, I think, yeah. Does Sapo have a YouTube channel I can check out? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, channel? just type this. Type, whoa, sorry. Stop type that. Just type that in Google, and you'll get uh, all of them. TikTok, the whole shebang, Facebook, uh, YouTube, nice. everything. You'll see. You'll see it. Just type that. That's why I made that name. It's easier. Sweet. There you go. Sapo Barbecue comes out. All of his channels will come out with that. Uh, what's up, Noe? Good to see you, brother. Um, Paul Silva, nice to see you too. Palestine, Texas. Man, we got a bunch of nice folks hanging out here today. How long have you been making YouTube videos or vi videos in general, content creation? Um, I don't know the exact year, but like when the internet first started, I got on YouTube watching mm -hmm. it from work. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't supposed to, but we were watching it. And mm -hmm. I saw uh, this guy, Jeff False. He's from Louisiana, called JB, Cajun Cooking. Mm -hmm. And we teased him and made friends finally. And we made friends, but I said, you know what? I'm going to try that. Well, at first, there wasn't even widescreen. It was just square, you know, like low okay. resolution. So it was about, I think, a little bit after 2000 five maybe something uh, no maybe before that but wow um yeah it was it was a uh, cooking with surf and sapo that's what it was called first but if you see somebody in the streets what's the name of your channel cooking with surf and sapo man they can't remember it so <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's coming but, Mark. Uh, it's coming but uh yeah i just do it for fun i i don't uh I went ahead and started doing that monetizing thing, but yeah. I really do it as a hobby. You know, I just let it go naturally and I right love on. it. Yeah. I don't want to be a slave, man. You know, <laughs> uh, it is work. Uh, I mean, I'm here to testify that. I mean, uh, me and Terry, uh, you know, do these reels now and uh, mainly we do it because it helps us, you know, promote and, and, and uh, let the world know that we have a barbecue rub to sell actually two now and uh, and it really does work but but you're right it is it is work there they are man that's good stuff right there it's the good stuff thank you Sapo. <laughs> good stuff y'all yeah hey thank if you. they haven't got it they need to get some because i agree I'll, I'll tell you what uh he he didn't just throw this out on the market he uh planned it and uh, you know tested all kinds of combinations and the end result is just phenomenal and i use it on everything my wife she uh raves about it so good yeah yeah it's been really successful and and everybody's really liked it uh i'm really really glad that we took the chance and, and put something together and and it's been good um you know so we're very fortunate um and then you know we have fans like you that use it and uh tell people about it that really helps a bunch we've got a question for you uh from Al Lunasi, Lunasi, uh, cheers, Arnie and Sapo. Sapo is one of the few doing tripa videos. Any new tripa recipe videos soon? Um, I want to, but when I saw eighty-five dollars a box the other day, I, it blew my mind. And um, you know what I mean? Um, I want to. Um, Pena's is my friend too. Pena's Meat Market on Morgan. They mainly uh -huh. sell to restaurants, but they were selling them to me for pretty cheap before all this COVID mess. But I'll get some, mm -hmm. Al. I'll Sounds get like you some need to split a box with somebody. <laughs> yeah, I usually buy them and then they're they're frozen, so you got to let it thaw a little bit before right. you can break it apart. Right. But I've been craving some myself, Al. Yeah. Honestly, they're good so. stuff for sure. Uh, but I'll, I'll get I'll get some for Al, okay? <laughs> got another question from Javier Chavez. He wants to know what's the secret behind the Sapo name. How did you come up with that? Oh, okay. This is funny. Um, well, you know, Sapo 
the uh, toad or I, right. a frog or a toad, whatever. Anyway, um, I used to go to Mexico a lot, all the way on a bus to the Pacific side surfing with my friends. And we use that, that sunscreen called bullfrog. Okay. And I, and had a little frog head for the cap. And uh, we called them uh, Sapo de Ticla. That's the name Sapo of the place in head. Mexico. Yeah, Sapo de Ticla. Ticla is a river. Right, right. So uh, I, I like that name, and I used I use it for the internet for a while. Then I said, you know what? I'm gonna keep that name, man. I'm gonna, <laughs> and it's a it's like a nickname, but it's nothing. Uh, I'm not a frog, or I don't have a horse voice. I just <laughs> it's it's easy to remember. You know, <laughs> and it's catchy. Yeah, it is. It is. It's pretty cool, anyway, actually. Um, so you used to be a surfer, too? Yeah, I still have my boards. I just haven't gone. I, shoot, I, I want to go, but I uh, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's not that close to home right now. I worked yeah, at the base, yeah. and it was very close to the beach. I worked graveyard shift. I'd get off at 630, and I'd just uh -huh. shoot straight to the beach and do a dawn patrol when the sun was rising. And then I don't work there no more. So now it's like, you know, and then now we have the internet. We used to go no matter what. Now you have the internet, you get picky. You check the conditions, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I've been wanting to go, but anyway, I don't know. Well, Everything changes. I'm sure get out there once in a while. Uh, summer's run, summer's here, so it's yeah. time to get out by the I, beach anyway. I definitely, I definitely could use the exercise. <laughs> hey, Darren. No, man, it's just plain water, bro. <laughs> I don't really do the ranch water stuff. I mean, I've tried. Mine's it. not okay. water. It's tried. It's okay, but it's not my thing. Uh, last night we had a private steak class, and with some really nice people, and uh, so they kind of hung around here. We we didn't get done till about nine thirty, and so they hung around here. And we had a couple of beers, and then Terry went to bed, and I you can go run, <laughs> mom. <laughs> And uh, so we had a couple of beers, and then they left about 10-ish and, and uh, had a good time. And, and so I just started, you know, getting on the phone, trying to play catch-up and stuff. And um, so there was this bottle of Cabo Wobble sitting there just calling my name. And so I had about three shots, and um, Terry got mad at me this morning. What are you doing? You haven't started drinking during the week. I'm like, they were just staring at me, so I had to take a shot. <laughs> But anyway, I try to lay off during the week uh, a lot. But anyway, water's good for you, man. I like water, too. Hello, Denise. Hello. Um, any good pulled pork or carnitas recipes? Um, do you have uh, any carnitas uh, videos? Tapo? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Your channel? Yeah. The, the ones I like are from Michoacan, the style where mm -hmm. they, I got, in fact, I got the copper Kazo. Really? Uh, from Michoacan. Yeah, it's not clean, unfortunately, but. Yeah, uh, I'd like to give me one of those. I like to put all the parts of the pig in there. I don't have the video that I have just regular chunks of meat. Right. But right. Uh, they use the uh, cuero, cuero, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the buche. 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 Yeah. Yeah, they use that. They use all that in there, and, and man, it's really good. They have it. But I have one, I have some videos to answer his question, but it's not like, it's just the kind you get with just the chunks of meat, which yeah, yeah. is good too. And and, and pork, I have kind of the normal, That's kind of the normal thing here. I mean, uh, in the Valley, I mean, when you buy carnitas already from a restaurant or store or whatever, it's just the chunks of meat. Uh, now the one that has the, the cuero and stuff, that's chicharrones. So sometimes they have a little bit of meat and the chicharron at the same time. And uh, it's funny you ask that because I'm working on a oh. Carnitas video right now. I'm trying to, I've done a couple of test runs because I wanted to come out really badass, right? And uh, so I was kind of amazed that there's a lot, a, a few different ways to actually make them. Some people boil them, some people uh, in water, and then kind of sort of pan fry them to give them the color. They use uh, milk, they use Coke. And I'm like, man, I've never done that uh, on Carnitas. I just kind of, you know, put them in the oil and let them go and until they're done, you know, and uh, they turn out pretty good like that, too. But uh, I'm, we're definitely working on a video. I actually I have a pork butt thawing right now. And along with that, um, I wanted to make a little at least a reel. I've got this idea. I'm going to get my mom to to make a video. And we're going to make some uh, asado de puerco also. 
but I want to grill some pork chunks, you know, from the pork butt and then baste them with the uh, red sauce from the, that we use for the asado. I want to see how that turned out, man. That's that's my next project in the next couple of days. We'll see how it turned out. It should be pretty good, man. Yeah, it sounds good. I love carnitas, um, too. Hey, man, I've been uh, cooking those pork steaks lately. God, they, 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 they cut the pork butt, you know, into steaks. Right. And yep. God yep, yep. dang, man. That's good stuff. That, that, yeah, it's, a, it's crunchy, and then you got the fat, and it's just, yep, yep, yep. it's really good. And it's cheap. <laughs> It's cheap. Yes, sir. Very compared to some of the other stuff, it's definitely inexpensive. <clears throat> What's your favorite grill to cook on there in your backyard? Um <laughs> the PK grill. PK. Okay, that, I was gonna and, say it's probably your PK. It's the one I see the most. Yeah, and my Kamado. I got a Kamado that's like 30 years old. Really? Been through hurricanes that's one kind of pit I've never had. It's the original. Somebody said, what kind of Kamado is it? I said, it's yeah. a Kamado. It's the original one that, uh -huh. uh, that this is amazing. They're from California by East Sacramento. Okay. And they, uh, the father, I guess, was in World War II. And he was somewhere over Okinawa or somewhere. And uh, he saw those. Mm -hmm. And he uh, got the patent to make them in America the first really? time. Yeah. And the. Uh, the first, I remember when I was a little kid, the neighbor man had one. I was, what is that? You know, and I was like five years old and they were cooking on it. And it was one of those clay ones. The one I got is concrete. It weighs yeah. like 500 pounds. Really? Yeah. Concrete. concrete or fire brick concrete, you know, the high temp. And, um, yeah. it, and all the moving parts, all uh, marine stainless. It's been sitting outside for about 30 years. There's no rust or anything. That's pretty but, well. I had no idea they were that old, man. Yeah, That's pretty good. cool, then. It's they're kind of good. hard to move around, though, right? Yeah, it's in the same place. I've never moved it. It's not going to be not... for tailgating? <laughs> no, no, no. My wife. Hey, Castro, in the house. What's up, compadre Lou? Hello there, Lou. How are you doing there? <laughs> uh, thank you, Lou. Appreciate that, brother. You're a Jedi master, too, man. Big time. And uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it, brother. And uh, Javier Munoz says oh. that um, if you ever go north of the valley, Jalisco's restaurant in Falfurias makes the best chicharrones con huevo. Um, okay. Is that down, uh, Javier, is that down uh, old 281 in town? I don't think I've ever seen it. Normally, we just fly up 281. Sometimes we'll stop at that one that's right there by, uh, what is it, 285? Uh, or before that, closer to the pilot. I think it's right by the pilot. Um, we've eaten there a couple of times, but not uh, not carnitas. Um, Sapo, what kind of camera do you use? Uh, just, you know, I know you have your style and your stuff, and I, I use Canons, and uh, I think you use a different um, brand, right? There might be so, some of these guys that want to make their own videos and stuff. Okay. I use the uh, Sony a6000 they're up to okay. way higher than that now yeah but i got two of the same kind you know i got two of them exactly mm -hmm. the same um the, if you're ever going to make videos get two one for zooming in on the food and one zooming or one wide angle for the cook and then there you, you can just switch back and forth but it's right. very important to have the same camera because uh then the white balance and everything will be equal right. but i use right. a6000s i got them at uh best buy years ago they're still mm -hmm. good they're still good they're not 4k but yeah what, whatever yeah i mean 4k in my opinion is overrated anyway i mean for social media it's just it's overrated uh i think first, uh yeah go ahead Sorry. at first it was okay because everybody used to watch on the big tvs but now we watch on these <laughs> you know that's right we watch on these that's, right. that's all you need man yeah yeah, we so, we film everything in 1082 just because, uh, and I and I jumped from a Canon 60 Mark IIs to the R6s because we were thinking or planning to go 4K, and at the end of the day, it's just so much data, you know, and it's so much yeah. harder to store it, takes so much longer to upload, and it takes yep. a big uh, amount of energy out of your computer when you're trying to edit it, and so it's just it's it's kind of a pain in the butt, you know, unless that you're really doing that full time and that's what you do. Um, right. But generally like the stuff we do, 
and I think you do. You basically just want to make short, fast, and easy videos, and and um, and they still come out really good at, at 1080. Um, so this this that. all I use for TikTok for TikTok, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's yeah, it's pretty much nice. what I do too. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah. and 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 you're right about having two exactly the same cameras mm -hmm. because uh, when I bought. I had two 60 Mark IIs because those are your entry level Canons, you know. Um, and then I bought an R6. And uh, man, when I would go back and forth, the buttons are not the same, the adjustments uh -huh. not the same. And then I'd wind up screwing things up. Now, damn, yep. I got to start <laughs> over. You know, so I finally yeah. broke down and sold the 260 so I could get one more R6. And now it's easy, you know, you're right. That white balance, you said it the same. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. It works good. Everything. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 I've been looking at the 360 cameras by GoPro, uh -huh. uh, GoPro Max. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll get one because, you know, not for this, I don't think. But what you can do, you can just set it up in front of you and then only use one camera. And, and it takes a picture all the way around like a spear. Right. Uh -huh. And so if you're cooking, you could just show your face. Then automatically when you're editing it, it could just zoop down there to the food back up. But really? I don't know. It's kind of like about 400 and something bucks. You know, I think of, I'm going to wait a little bit. What's up, Daniel? Good to see you, brother. How you doing? Hope you're okay, man. Hey. Um, yeah, I've kind of wanted a GoPro 2 for a while. And I'm just like, man, I just, I can't justify having it, you know? I mean, it, Not it's Not for what like, we do. No, and I already have three cameras with the M52. So I'm like. I don't really need it, you know. It's more no. like eh, it's kind of a cool thing to have, you know. Maybe if you're surfing and you want to yeah. put it on your head, you know, that's different. But yeah, uh, fishing hey Mike, or what's surfing. going on, brother? Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Mike. You know, Mike over there. He used to have a little uh, barbecue supply there in Corpus too. Yeah, Mike I was hanging too. out with them. I, maybe I ran them off. I don't know. <laughs> I went, <laughs> no, I, don't I went back so. one day and it was a tool store. I was all Jeez, bummed out. No, man. <laughs> I miss yeah, you, I Mike. You yeah. yeah yeah mike's one of our retailers uh buys oh, cool. you know some wow and og on a regular basis thank you mike for your support man i'm glad your customers like our product man really 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 glad yeah, it's, it's good, good man yes sir yes sir and so what kind of a editing program do you use for your videos oh for the uh youtube i use uh cyberlink power director 365 i think it's called mm -hmm. and um I started off with like the 10 or eight and then every year I, you know, kept yeah. subscribing. You, you can't just yeah. buy the program. Now you got to pay for the next year, you know? So, yeah. But yeah, everybody's I, I, going to a subscription basis now. Yeah. I like that one. Um, there's another one. Oh man. My friend told me to get it, but it's so comp it's free, but it's complicated, man. And, um, I just don't have, I mean, I have time, but it, man, I'm not easy. It's not easy to learn that stuff on your own. I know, you know, man. I've I, been wanting to do it, and I just can't sit down and sit still long enough. You have to have patience, and I think I just don't have the patience. I bought the um, for the Mac. I bought the 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 what's it called? Uh, their program. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. Oh, movie uh, iMovie. Adobe. I bought the whole oh, Adobe yeah. program, and I paid oh, wow. for it month. I paid monthly for it for like six months. It never opened it, so I was like, you know what, cancel that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yeah. So I just pay my kids. You know, my boys do the editing, and, and oh, that's good. A, that's smart. It yeah, and I have a guy here uh, that that records <laughs> some of our videos. He did our steak class the other day. He has that life through lens. Uh, Ismael Martinez. He's really, really good with the camera, and he has his own. Uh, he does restaurant reviews and stuff. If y'all don't oh, cool. know uh, Ismael, that's another guy I need to interview. Man, he's a cool dude, man. Uh, really, really nice guy. Um, and uh, anyway, he makes restaurant uh, critiques and stuff and eats all over the place, makes really great videos. He's done some videos for us and done a really, really good job. Uh, we pay him to come do stuff like that. And uh, he's a Sony guy, too. And uh, I've seen the Sony stuff, and, and sometimes I think I want to try them. But my both of my sons or, or both of my kids are total Canon fanboys, so... I can't really make that jump because then it's going to be like a conflict. They got to try yeah. to deal and whatever. So we're sticking with Canon at least for now, and uh, I have all the lenses and everything else that goes with Canon. So yeah, yeah. Stuck with Sony, Canon for a while. 
Sony's um, proprietary. Frank Gonzalez. Hey, what's up, Jose Salazar from Brownsville, Texas? How you doing, bro? Thanks for joining us uh, two weeks ago at the state class. I hope you kick butt over there in Edinburgh. Um, let's get together one day. Just have a cold beer and some barbecue, man. We got Frank Gonzalez who met and talked a bit with Arnie at the hunting and fishing expo a few years back, not realizing I was talking to a pit master. <laughs> man, I'm just a regular guy like everybody else. I don't really honestly even think of myself as some pit master, you know. I mean, we use the name in our company and stuff. It's just mainly for marketing appeal, you know, for our products. And uh, I think people, you know, kind of gravitate to a name like that. And it's more like a marketing thing, you know, but it's a cool name. We like it. Uh, but I'm just a regular guy like everybody else, man. Just just cooking. There's Santiago Bernal, last year's high stakes winner. Congratulations again, Santiago. I hope you kick butt again this year. Uh, and he says, can you read that, Tapu? says, uh, Surfing yep. Shop Fajita videos are the best Fajita videos on YouTube. Santiago, now I take offense to that. <laughs> no, he, he he said you too. Uh, he oh, said, okay. Ar Mike, oh, you know, he said YouTube. <laughs> no, he says <laughs> Arnie Tex that. and Surf and Sapo. I, I totally agree with you, Santiago. He has some badass Fajita videos, man. I love all your videos, Lee. Um, yeah, I but. Like your uh, technique. I like the way you do stuff. I mean, it's you do everything really nice and smooth and explain it well i mean really really cool man yeah What's up, um, Danny? how you doing brother just be careful at heb buying fajitas the uh ones in the bag because mm -hmm. you you get a hit and miss man yeah yeah some of them are horrible there's nothing you can do I that mean, is true and and it seems to me like we see more of them nowadays than in the past uh yeah it's my weird. thought is they're just peddling a lot of select uh fajitas you know very no marbling it's just me no, it tastes horrible. good but dang it's tough you know but it turns uh it turns pink kind of like really? like uh i don't know why no matter if you put a good rub or just salt it it it's a different kind of meat i don't know i mm. mean it's beef but it's just cheap i wonder if they put uh phosphates or whatever in they the don't meat. put no they're just there are two of them full size and they put them in the bag <clears throat> and their prices they're they're down now again. They came down to five. I think everything's starting to come down a little bit. That's a good thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Jose Gutierrez says, wow, an OG just came in today. Yeehaw, badass rub, man. Congratulations. Sir, thank you for your support, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much, Jose. Monty Page yeah. made it in the house. Monty Page um, from, is it Idaho? Is it Wyoming? Is it uh, South Dakota? <laughs> Tell me again, Monty. I know you're moving to Idaho or something like that. Um, I keep voting it for you every day, bro. I don't know how long that thing's going to go, but I just want you to know I have been voting every day, and I hope you win, man. James Dyer says, what about the white goof I this from H-E-B? Have you tried those something? Yeah. Yeah, you get them by the uh, butcher shop there, mm -hmm. and um, they don't have them all the time, but I went ahead and got some. Yeah. And they they were they were awesome. You couldn't mess them up. Right. Know? Right. And a uh, lot of people like the I like the outside. They're tender, but it, the flavor is different, man. Yeah, it it's, is different. It's it is. it's more like I don't know. It's it's like a steak or something. But I, I like uh, inside prime, you know, good marbling. Right. And right. and the bavette or whatever they call it, the uh, flap. Yeah. Yeah, that's real tender, but it don't taste like the the out. Uh, it does inside. have a little different taste. Uh, it's different, I yeah. Will, I I will tell you the one that I that I got from Bory Craft a couple last week, and I cooked them on uh, Friday, I think, Saturday. Man, they were good, and and I've cooked a lot of good ones. I mean, they're always good. Sort of like that. I don't care where you get them; they're usually good. Um, these had a little different taste. I don't know what ranch they came from, but they just had a little different taste. But I mean. A good difference. They tasted like, yeah. I don't know if you look at my reel when I did the, mm, they're good. And then I was like, whoa, there's something there. It's a little different. And, and all I used was OG and Wow. So it wasn't a different rub. Um, but the meat itself had a really good flavor. Whatever they finished that those cows where those came from put a really good flavor on the meat. Montana going to Idaho. Monty Page. All right, brother. Well, you be safe, man. We're still voting for you. 
Chris Anguina. I'll just call you Chris from California. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, brother. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, fajitas are, are kind of hit and miss, kind of like anywhere you go. And, and and I've bought a lot of those outside skirts at HEB2. You know, they come in the little package. They're very yeah. expensive, but they're very good. Um, oh, those, are, yeah. Yeah, those are very good. But, um, you know, a lot of the comp guys use those. There's a pro tip for you guys. Some of the comp guys oh, wow. use those outside skirts from HEB. And that's because they're very tender. And as long as you season them right, cook them right, you know, you might have a shot at a walk or a win, man. They're 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 good. I'm with you though, Sapo. I like the flavor of the inside skirt better than the outside skirt. And I do have that marinade I posted on you on uh, on social media. But honestly, I prefer non-marinated meats. I like to taste the meat, you know. And that's why I made like OG and Wow because I want those to enhance the flavor of the meat. Yeah, me I don't too. want to change the flavor of the meat. You know, when I eat brisket, I want to taste smoky brisket. You know, when I eat uh, yeah, fajitas. I want them to taste like fajitas, but um, it is hit and miss as far as the tenderness goes. So you live in Corpus Christi. How long have you been living in Corpus? Yeah, no. Nineteen uh, nineteen eighty five, I think. Eighty five. Oh, wow. I lived in Victoria before that, but yeah, eighty five. You told me before you were you're a California guy, right? You came from California. Yeah, when I was a little kid, my dad grew up in Freer. Believe oh, it or really? not, Freer, he's a Freer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? They came from Oklahoma, and he went to Freer. Then he moved to Army to Monterey, got my mom. Then they came back, and <laughs> it's weird, man. And uh, so I ended up being Texan, you know. There you go. There but, you go. Yeah. Oh, you. Um, I moved when in Victoria. My friends had a meat market, and mm -hmm. the fajitas were like two bucks a pound, man. And uh, no one knew what they were at first, you know, because yeah, yeah. they used to grind them up for hamburger. Uh -huh. And um, those guys uh, showed me it was an Inahosa family. They were my friends. And man, yeah. they they were just like every weekend cooking it up, man. And wow. um, that butcher shop was nice. It was just a it was a grocery store with a butcher shop in the back. But man, uh -huh. they had air, old fashioned kind where the, the hang the <clears throat> they hang the half a cow draw it in bring it in and then butcher ch uh, chop it up mm -hmm. and uh there's only a few places like that now that do that you know yeah uh, yeah i agree with you very moody's few places like that. moody's does it and bory actually does it those two so nice. but but let me tell you the re the thing that's good about that is you can tell them you want some a special cut they can make it you know, they really? can make it. Other places can't make it because they got yeah. everything's already chopped up in boxes. It's in Cryovac, yes. And a butcher shop can actually cut whatever you want. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, that's Captain awesome. Spaldo Mate says yeah. uh, the closest HEB is 45 minutes, uh, but I'm going to make the trip. What's your go to meat from there? Curious of the quality difference from there and places like Albertsons and Kroger. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Any ideas? Uh, H-E-B H -E -B is better. I know that. H-E-B yeah. H -E is one of those places that you get mad at them, but you'd like them because yeah. they, they take yeah. care of us. Like They're they're really good. They inspect everything. They are uh, they don't play around if they uh, they don't save the meat and like throw yeah. it out and makes or make sausage or whatever. You know, they they, right, right. they don't play around. And everything's good. It's fresh. But uh, to answer his question, um, what's, what's your go-to meat from there? Um, me, I like. I, I actually buy the briskets, man. The uh, mm -hmm. the choice briskets are two two ninety six again, and I just That's go good. over there and check. Yeah, I mean, you know, they come out good. Just oh, gotta yeah. take. If take you know how easy. to cook them, they're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're good. Two ninety six. That's coming around. Yeah. And what else? Let me think. Uh, I get the Moyejas there, the little packs. They're uh -huh. still good. Um, what else? The chicken's good at HEB. The uh, pork's good. The beef's good, but the one in the uh, butcher shop, the stuff yeah. that's out where you can buy it, it's lower grade. It's I think it's select. But yeah, if probably. you look in that butcher shop, they got like, 
they got wagyu prime everything that i would yes. if i was him i would go there and get the uh high quality beef yeah probably, um you know H -E -B does mm -hmm. have a lot of really good stuff um i like a lot of their meats i buy meat there i buy meats at aguilar and veras and uh, bob starts and red oak i mean i i, I buy from all of them uh so i'm kind of impulsive you know it depends on what i see that day if i see something cool at yeah. in one of these places you know i like um i'll i'll, I'll go uh oh did i fall out what happened uh oh crap where's arnie tex <laughs> can y'all still see me uh oh <laughs> Hey, can you all see me? Type in there if you can see me. Yeah, I'm back. That was my fault. Oh, I, I got a new oh, mouse okay. with those little sidetrack balls, and I started to mess with it right now, trying to move oh, the mouse okay. a little bit. Okay. And I Thank cut you. myself off, cut us both off. But Sc <laughs> thankfully, scared, it stayed connected. Scared uh, me, man. I thought I was yeah. in limbo. <laughs> I got to get used to that mouse. Uh, the old-fashioned yeah. butchers are the best. Not many left here in Ontario, Canada, and Alberta, Canada. Does have a few left, though. That's great, man. I agree. The old-school butcher shops are pretty damn sweet. Uh, we're lucky here in the Valley that we have, like, Veras and Aguilar. And, and um, there's a couple of other ones out there. Uh, Benny's over here, uh, Bob Stark. They'll cut whatever we want, man. So we're pretty fortunate here at Um David Dunham says, what's up, Sapo? Oh, uh <laughs> chilling do you guys ever cook tri-tip i've done it a few times uh, oh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah i've done it lots of times yeah. um i've got uh, two of them in my freezer right now i just haven't thought them so i can make a video or cook them or do something with them yeah that santa maria style that's how they yeah. do it you know they yeah. use red oak red oak wood and they use a special rub and it's really good but I like I like tri tip. It's good. Uh, it it it's coming to Texas now, and yeah, been a pretty strong uh, seller from what I can tell. I see a lot of yeah. people making it now for sure. It's easy too. It, it's it's hard to mess up, man. It's yeah, nice yeah, it's, it is an easy cook. Yes, I agree. And H uh, E B has picanha too. Yeah, it's good. Saponin, you're there, but Arnie isn't. Oh, hey, Mark. Yeah, yeah I accidentally before. disconnected myself, man. That was my fault. I'm glad it stayed on, though. Um, Javier Munoz is on here. Hey, what's up, Javier? Uh, everything's cool here, brother. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, Michael says, good evening, and uh, great grilling and pit smoking to everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lou, what does Lou say? Lou Castro says, love. Fro tri tip, I guess he means tri tip and yeah, picanha. Yeah, picanha is good too, man. That's damn good stuff. Baldur's gotten really good at making that. My buddy, uh, um, este Javier Mejia makes it, you know, he does a real good job with it too. He makes that all the time, man. Good stuff for sure. <clears throat> Do y'all prefer regular grill grates or the thicker grates like the ones they use for SCA? um what do you think on that uh, i uh i like grill grates the ones he the ones called grill grates the aluminum mm -hmm. i've i've uh warped warped those before really but, uh man, yeah that man takes some serious heat yeah well i have that infrared grill you know and and it, i overdid it a couple times but <laughs> but they still work yeah. but anyway um i like those but i i like i like doing a uh, steaks i like the meat right on top of the grill and i like the fire to put that that uh the whole thing to be seared not just lines you know what i mean right right it, to me it's it tastes better it's more crunch and hey, hi, elizabeth uh, hi, and, elizabeth. and some people do them in an aluminum i'm in mean, a cast iron pan that's okay but then you don't have the fat dripping smell you know that the i like fire. to just put up yeah, I like that. I like that smell, and I like that char. Yeah, God damn. Yep, same here. Hey, uh, James, you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Chris says uh, pork belly seems to be a thing now too. Yes, I agree. It really oh, yeah. is. Uh, it seems like Texas, at least 
in general was brisket ribs and chicken, you know, and sausage, a lot of sausage. But we're starting to cook a lot of the things that we see outside of Texas that other people have been cooking for a long time. Um, I really, really like pork belly a lot. I don't cook it as often as I would like to. Uh, there's a few things like that that I really would like to cook more often. And somehow I just never make the time to do them. Um, they take a little time, but yeah, man, that's good stuff. Really, really good stuff. What's up, Roger? Good to see you, bro. I haven't seen you in a while, man. South side of San Antonio. Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to agree with you, Sapo, on the grill grates. Uh, that's my take, yeah. too. I like the grill grates. The grill grates make really pretty, beautiful presentation. Um, and if you have too much fire, it does keep your meat from burning, you know. It just puts the smoke yeah. on the lines. Um, I know in competition, some guys are cooking chicken that way. I personally prefer have the direct fire uh, to yeah, get a little too. bit of that mired reaction, that char. To me, that's just another wonderful flavor if you're cooking over fire. To me, uh, in general, if you're cooking with fire, with wood or charcoal, why are you putting something to block the wood <laughs> and charcoal? That, you know, just to me, yeah. that, that's me, right? I mean, yeah, uh, it's weird. I'm not saying they don't work. They do a great job. They're awesome, man. And especially for competition things, they're beautiful. But if I want to barbecue over fire, I mean, I want to taste what the fire does to the meat. You know, and that's just me. I know a lot of people use them way more than I do and like them and enjoy no. them a lot more than they, I do. I have three sets of them. So I do use yeah. them sometimes. But generally, I want to cook over the fire, man. Hello, Roy. What's going on? How you doing, hey, brother? Uh, Good to see you. Back to the pork bellies. Um, they're hard to find the ones with the skin on them. You got to go to Mexican meat markets. Really? The ones at HEB, they have no skin. It's just fat. They mm -hmm. they cut the skin off. Hmm. You know? I want but to if you want to make uh, that the other day, but I don't you want to make one. those pork belly uh, the chicharron. Chi yeah, that's I made them uh, many times, but uh -huh. you have to have that skin. It won't crack. There's no skin. It yeah. won't do anything. Yeah, otherwise it won't have the crackling part. The, yeah. yeah. That's good stuff. And there's an art to that, too, you know? You uh, cook them down, yes. and then when you get them down and uh, the meat's starting to get tender, you, you get them out of there, and you take them out and let them cool off somewhere. Then mm -hmm. you get the hot, hot oil hot, 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 and you drop them back in, and man, pow, and it starts yeah. crackling. It's like a two-step process. It's yeah, really cool I've seen to... guys on YouTube do that. I've never done it that way. Uh but I haven't had chicharrones that come out that good either. So, and that's probably the reason why. I'm not sure what the science behind that is, but obviously it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah they've, they've gone up in price, but I think everything's gone up. You know, uh, yeah. chicken kind of doubled here in the last couple of weeks as well. I know. There's been these chicken plants burning down and stuff, and I'm like, what the heck's going oh, on shit. there, man? It almost seems like a conspiracy, like somebody's deliberately going around and burning chicken plants. I'm not saying it is. It just seems really weird. But, yeah, hey, chicken bro. is a price. And we love chicken in my house. We like to eat a lot of chicken. Anything's possible now, honestly. But we got to keep cooking and keep on trucking, you know. Oh, uh, if the people are hurting – and they don't have much money, you can go to HEB and get a 10 pound leg quarters. They oh, were four, 448 for a bag. Now yeah. it went up to 529. That's still not bad because it's 10 That's pounds. And yeah, then you pounds. can cut the drumsticks off, put them in bags, uh, food saver bags, yeah. seal them and throw them in your freezer and you can survive it. I mean, I'm talking yeah. people that yeah. are on a tight budget. Cause totally agree with it. you. It's, and then get you some uh, beans from uh, Sam's Club, 12 pounds for $9. And then uh, rice, wherever you want to get rice, you know. Yeah, but you can yeah. survive, man. You just have to. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I've been going um, old school. Michael Brown wants to know, which is the best cooking option for a tomahawk steak? Should I grill over an open fire or smoke my steak on the smoker? What do you think, Sapo? Well, uh, they're real long. <laughs> in the uh, the bone, I guess they wrap foil on it or something. Yeah, but okay. I would say uh, if it matters how thick it is, if it's very thick, you might want to uh, smoke it first, 
and then then hit it at the end put it up you know put it over some hot fire and get a little crust that's what i would do they call it reverse sear or whatever you know but yeah yeah, yeah there's two ways to do that i i've done yeah. it both you know the reverse sear like you're talking about yeah and then just put it over the hot fire and then my favorite way is to just put it over the fire and then set it yeah. over there and let it finish cooking yeah either way either and way um a lot of things uh, people don't understand i mean most people do but some don't that the thickness of the meat has a lot uh to do with how you cook it you know like yes, you absolutely. get those little five dollar ribeyes you got to just cook them bam bam hot fast get them yeah. off yeah and also yeah. uh, when you use rub if you have a big piece of meat like a brisket you can load it up man put it yeah. thick and it's not gonna it's not gonna affect you because when you cut it, you're gonna have that much meat and just a little strip of bark Right but on. if you're at a little steak and you pour this on there, you could you can mess it up, man. Yeah, it'd be so, salty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so thick meat. I always tell people in my videos, thick meat, lots of rub. Thin meat, take it easy, you know. Yeah, good yeah. good point. Really good point. Absolutely. I learned the hard way, of course, years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. <laughs> it sucks when um, you put too much. Yeah, just my two cents, Michael Brown. Uh, and, and I always respond like this when people ask me those kinds of questions. The word best, you know, means different things to different people. So uh, it's really going to depend on who you ask. You know, some people like to cook it this way. Some like to cook it that way. At the end of the day, you need to experiment and do it a couple of different ways and see what's best for you the way that you like it. Some guys like to sous vide. I still have yet to buy a sous vide machine. I got to try one. I just forget to order one. I'm, I'm going to get one one of these days if I remember to get on yeah. Amazon and just buy one. Um, yeah. and, um, you know, and just see if it's true, if it's all the hype is real or not. But again, best means different things to different people, but, um, Sapo does them his way. I like to do them my way. The best way is going to be your way, you know, and the only way you're going to find that is to experiment a little bit, but I do like yeah. what you said, Sapo. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, big, thick meats, put a lot of rub, thin meats, go, what did you say? Take it easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh that, that's Hey, remember when I showed you these uh the big holes i keep yeah. the uh i keep the lids from uh other ones and they have lids with little holes yes. Yes. sometimes i take it off and put the matter of what i'm doing and you can really control it yes now i agree but I if agree. you're good at it, like like you can just take it easy too you know not go too yes. crazy but yes eh, it is what it is i do the same so, thing as you do it like like when i'm doing uh comp steak or something you know the class we've done um, I'll put the small holes on there for the finish because you can finesse that finish. Uh, but for seasoning at the beginning, I leave the big holes on. Yeah. And, uh, so I do the same thing as you. I mean, I save the lids from the other shakers and, and reuse them. Mark Scroggs oh. in the house. Uh, you Somebody can get had a question for us. South Louisiana. <laughs> I bet you can. Roger, Roger Hernandez asked. Arnie, how do you do your mollejas? I've seen Sapo's videos. He wants to know how you do your mollejas. Um, you know, I've, I've done a couple of different ways, similar to what you said uh, in your video. I, I used to boil them. Uh, I've done them that way. and But when I boil them, I like to put some onions and some garlic and a little bit of wow in there and or maybe some OG or one or the other or any kind of seasoning. Uh, and to me that – and I – I jacquard them too. I would just give them a real light jacquard and that way everything soaks into the meat. But, you know, when you made that video the other day about uh, a couple months ago about, you know, you thought they tasted good without even doing that. Yeah. And me and Valde Garcia tried that and we actually liked it without the boiling. So they're awesome yeah, either way. But, um, you know, if you don't yeah. want to spend that extra time boiling, that's another way. The, do you know you're really not supposed to boil them? You're supposed to bring the water to right 212 is boiling. You bring it to about 200 mm -hmm. and you'd shut it off and you just put them in there and let them sit in there. You don't boil it. It's uh, blanching. Uh -huh. And uh, it all it does is uh, it helps uh, soften that membrane sac thing that mm -hmm. that's real chewy. It, that's yes. what it does. It, okay. it doesn't you don't need to really cook them because and, and once you get them to the pit, Start a little bit away from the fire. People put them right over the grill, right over the heat, man. They they just burn up, man, like crazy. Yes. I I don't bring them over to the. Well, I uh I actually 
wait till they stop dripping. Then I get a real sharp knife that I have, fillet knife, and I cut them like like fillets, little fillets. Yeah. Yeah. And then I then I put some more rub on there, and I bring them, start bringing them over. And then mm-hmm. I, then I just brown brown them over the fire, and they're no more. Uh, they, it's like bacon, man. When you're done, it's like crunchy bacon. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. When they're it's nice good. and crispy and soft on the inside. Yeah, ooh, man. Man. And, uh, everybody, oh, you need to make, man, I eat them like candy. I don't make no yeah. tacos. I don't want to put all that stuff and ruin the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I usually do it both ways. When they're coming out, I'll eat them by themselves. And when I'm done cooking, I'll go ahead and make a taco anyway. Because <laughs> it's good stuff, man. It really is. And I love salsa, hey, too. I like. Hey, you want to hear a funny one? Let's go. My wife, her mom's from Monterey. It, my wife's from Monterey. Her mother's from Monterey, Mexico. But my wife never ate all that stuff, right? So uh, mm-hmm. I made mollejas, and uh, I, I told them they were oysters. I told her they were oysters. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she ate them. Yeah. And, That's uh, funny. I got her to eat tripas, too, man. Wow. But, yeah. yeah. Her mother ate everything, you know, and the father. The father's from Hebronville. But... Uh, Oh, well, that was just a story. <laughs> All right. We got another question. Uh, one of them fighting words questions. Uh, so many different opinions. This is from Michael Ramos. What's your, what y'all's take? Uh, fat cap up or fat cap down? Uh, de- me? I yeah, do yeah. down. I do down. And uh, I, uh, I cook them a different way. I put a piece of cardboard under it. It all depends on the type of pit you have. Thank you. If your fire source is far away, you can put it up, down, sideways, whatever. But if if the fire source, if you got a Kamado, the fire's underneath, right? It's going up. You don't want, uh, I mean, I put cardboard. It sounds Mm -hmm. crazy. I put a piece of cardboard there and I put the the, uh, fat down fat down because i want the smoke to get on the other side to get the to permeate wow. and um the fat it, you know unless you cut it all off you're not going to get it all the way in there so i just put it down man me right yeah I, and and you said it you nailed it it just depends on what you're cooking on you know if you're cooking on a drum or like you said a kamado the heat down below i'll generally do fat side down on my stick burner sometimes i'll put Meat side up and then flip it over with the fat side up halfway through the yeah. cook. It works either way, man. I mean, I don't know why people get so bent out of shape over something so silly like that. But I know. You know, at the end of the day, uh, like I told the other gentleman, it's just it's whatever you prefer, man. Everybody, it depends on who you ask. I mean, I cook them both ways. It depends on what mood I'm in or whatever, yeah. or what I'm cooking it on that day. It but, really doesn't matter as long as it comes out good. At the end of the day, if it tastes good and you nail the tenderness and the moisture. That's all that matters, man. And, Even the um, smoke ring ain't a big deal, you know? Yeah. Some people get bent out of shape over smoke ring. And, and here's another I thing I've uh, realized that wrapping it, you don't have to wrap uh, every time. If you have a big offset, yeah, I would wrap then because it's a big a big chamber. Mm-hmm. There's not as much moisture. But if you have a little Kamado yeah. and, say, and, and you spritz it, you're going to have moisture in that little area. It's a little area for the, and it just circles around. Yeah. So you don't really need to wrap it. I mean, right. I don't, in my Kamado, I don't wrap the briskets anymore. Yeah. And you don't even have to spritz on those sometimes, you know, because yeah, the moisture all there. It, yeah. It just sits there and spins around in there. It's pretty thank cool. Thank you, Gabriel. Appreciate that, man. Uh, thank you for the nice words. I uh, really appreciate that, brother. We try hard to put out some good content and uh, try to give good tips and, and advice. And Sapo does the same. And, uh, you know, we just try to help folks out. You know, I know there's a lot of folks out there that are probably even better cooks than we are, uh, and they don't want the help, and that's okay. But for those of you that do like to learn and and maybe didn't have a dad or an uncle or a grandpa to show you, I had all three, so I'm very, very blessed uh, all my life. And, uh, but some, not everybody has that. So we try to do that to help you guys out. Thank you, thank you very much. Go ahead and follow Sapo's channel too, Gabriel. Uh, he has a lot of really good cooking videos as well. well just uh, type that. Mm-hmm. Type that. Type Sapo Barbecue in Google, and just follow all those things. It, it'll take yeah. you to. That's the best okay. way. Yeah. Uh, and of course, he's this also too. asking. Um, sorry, uh, he's also oh. asking. You know, a good smoker to get in San Antonio without breaking the bank. Man, that's a tough, tough question because 
there's so many good ones out there. And uh, sometimes you can find some used ones on OfferUp or Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. So I would say look around. And, and, and you know, budget is different for different people. You know, some people, they buy a three, four, five thousand dollar pit. It's nothing to them. And for some of us, you know, a thousand bucks is a lot of money. So kind of really depends. I mean, you got any ideas on? on, on uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Weber Smoky Mountains. Yep. Those Weber Smoky Mountains. They're uh, I got I got three of them. They're unbelievable. Yes. You can go to sleep. You could set it and go to sleep. And in the morning, it'll you had to open it one time all night and you wake up and it's perfect. It's crazy, man. Yeah. But, you know what? That's one cooker I've wanted for a long time and I've never bought, you know, and I just kind of figured it with a drum. But I mean, uh, I got three of them. I don't use them enough. I need to start using them. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. of my friends use them in competition and they do everything. very well with them. They do cook good. They're amazing. That's what Thank I suggest to, to him. Yeah. Gabriel. Um, Surf and Sapo from Billy Johnson says hello. <laughs> hi, uh, hi there, Billy. Regarding spare rib, do you cook with the membrane on or off? Um, it, I peel it off sometimes, but you don't have to. It's yeah. another one of those. You're still going to get a smoke on the other side, the the ring. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess if it's real fatty, you could pull it off. But if it's not too fatty, I'd leave it on. It, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't, uh, in my opinion. And you do get a little more rub flavor on the meat on the bottom if you take it yeah. off. But I mean, if you cook it right and it's a good rib, I mean, in my opinion, you don't have to take it off. You can if you want to. Just another uh, point of contention for some cooks, but. It's yeah. really, it's just personal preference. If you want to take it off, take it off. You know, if it, and if you don't want to, yeah. don't. I mean, it's okay if you don't. Hey, uh, have you ever thought those big ribs, <clears throat> instead of just smoking them whole, cut them first and then put rub through, all the way around them and then cook them like that so you get the smoke on all sides? Like Does pork anybody, ribs? No, beef. Those oh, big yeah, beef. yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. done that on beef ribs. I've grilled them mm. on the drum, actually. And, uh, and and cut them individually, like short ribs, right? And then just flipped them and, and got a little char on all four sides. Yeah. Uh, three, really, because the bone was on there. But, yeah, yeah, that's good stuff, man, for real. Yeah. Let's see. We got Doc, Johnny, awesome stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us, Gabriel. Danny, Danny, uh, good point. Thanks for the reminder, sir. Uh, Hasty Bakes are pretty good all-around cooker in my opinion it's for the money it's really hard to beat a legacy because you can grill you can smoke you can make steaks because the grate comes up and down um i mean i've got a turkey or a couple turkey videos and on youtube uh with that cooker i ran competition with it for almost three years with just two hasty bakes and we did really well with them so yeah hasty bake if, if you can spend around 12 or 1300 bucks that's a legacy is a freaking awesome cooker too and if you want to be under a thousand probably the weber smoky mountains or a drum would do a good job for just about anybody as well all right what else we got here we got some folks here asking questions uh all right gabriel well good luck with that brother uh here's billy johnson he says uh sapo has an awesome recipe and for aduli sausage how do you say that Helped a lot when he started making Undui, Undui. Undui, okay. say, did he, Yeah, it's from Louisiana. Yeah, I, I made it. And uh, uh -huh. it's it's good to put in gumbo. It's spicy. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I got I've had uh, Axis. Um, I don't know if I've had that Undui or not, but I doubt it. <laughs> I've had Axis, dear. It, it's just a, a pork butt, but it's thick, fat piece and not ground too fine. And it's really? spicy. You put a lot of cayenne. Yeah, it's uh, uh -huh. it's used to throw into the food to uh, spice it up a little bit, and then you got the sausage. Nice. But uh, hmm. I gotta try I got, that. Yeah, Moody's. They were selling uh pork livers. They're hard to get, man. Really? About five pounds. Yeah, and it, it's uh the real boudin from Louisiana. It mm -hmm. takes that. So I got some. So I'm wow. gonna make some pretty soon. Yeah, that's something I haven't really done enough of is sausage. And I bought a grinder last year. And I've only used it like twice, and yeah. uh, man, because I'm always used to have a lot of brisket leftovers and uh, trimmings. And uh, now we don't compete, 
hardly ever, so I just haven't had that many. But uh, the little bit that I've had, I've made some hamburgers. It's, it's all good. Uh, thank you, Glenda Lee, for your comment. Uh, we try, and uh, I hope that we're helping you guys out. Sapo has an awesome, awesome channel, too. All his social media is really badass. I uh, hope some of you guys will go follow him if you're not already doing it. Uh, you will be entertained. You'll get some really good uh, tips and tricks and some pretty cool music, too. I love your music, Sapo, all the time. You always have a knack for putting that really good music on. David Dunham wants to know, uh, spare ribs, dry or wet? Uh, Dry. Dry, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the only way I've, I've – he's talking about marinating, right? Yeah. yeah uh, I don't, I don't no, marinate. he's saying uh, dry or wet, um, I think, on the sauce. Oh. To uh, sauce or not to sauce? Well, I have type 2 diabetes, so I can't eat too much barbecue sauce. So <laughs> there you go. dry for that's me. Reason. Yeah, they don't sell sugar, sugar-free sugar barbecue sauce. you got to make it. But I like barbecue sauce. I like it like uh, if you eat brisket, if you just want to take a piece and kind of dab it in there, you know. But I like to taste all that work. I want to taste the meat, man. Absolutely. I agree. I like it both. You know, I mean, some days I like them dry, you know, with just the rub. And then, then some days I like to put a little bit of glaze on there and, and just have that little hint of sweet. Uh, as long as it's not too much, they're, they're, they're just still going to taste the meat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Terry likes a little sauce on there, too. And so I, I make them to kind of please both of us, you know. Yeah. Da Daigles, you know Daigle, right? Daigles? Yes. They, they uh, sent me a bunch of glazes. And uh, mm -hmm. I use them, but I put it on very thin. Yeah. And every once in a while, you know. But yeah. I kind of can't eat that sugary. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Uh, Roger wants to know, uh, Sapa, what's your preferred wood? Uh, he uses... Mostly mesquite, but he likes to kind of know too. Um, mesquite, because we live in Texas, is everywhere. And uh, oh, excuse me, not oak. I mean, not not a live oak. These trees you see growing around here, I don't like it. But post yeah. oak, post oak, I buy it from B and B. I love mm -hmm. it, man. You can smoke the hell out of anything with post oak, and it never overpowers it. Yes, I and agree. Mes mesquite, it's good, but don't go crazy and make sure it's very, very dry. Yeah. You know, yep. you know. I like but, the mesquite from the monte. When it comes from the, you know, out in the branches and brook, man, it's something different about that mesquite. It just really has a better flavor. And it could be because it's been laying on the ground for a long time and it's yeah. super dry, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. It all has a really, really good flavor. Yeah, we we have like a little ranch in Hebronville. It's not a big place, but yeah, you can get as much as you want, you know. And nice. just take a chance. Well, who wants to drive that far anymore? But That's you a long know, ride. It rather just go ride. go to H E B and get some. <laughs> Buy the bag, right? <laughs> That's cheaper. Yeah, and there's plenty of guys on like Let Go and Marketplace pedaling. Oh yeah. Buy a wheelbarrow or a truckload or whatever. But, bring uh, it to your house. I love post oak, man. I don't know why. I just love it. Thank you, Monty. I agree, brother. Uh, I agree, man. Let's see what's Al got. Uh, Al's doing a budget cook challenge video soon for YouTubers. What can you barbecue for under 20 bucks? It would be fun doing during these tough times. Just an idea to consider doing for you guys. That's a great idea, Al. Thank you for suggesting that. I think that's a great idea. What can you cook for under 20 bucks? And maybe feed the family. Uh, that's a great idea. Any ideas, Sapa? What would you throw in there? Well, chicken. You could get whole fryers and and cut them up. Or you could buy those those bags that I was telling you, 10 pounds of chicken thighs, yeah. leg quarters, I mean, for yeah. uh, $5.39. That's a good one. And, um, oh, the uh, Smithfield's uh, spare ribs, you get a mm -hmm. whole spare rib with the fajita still in the back. Yeah. And the, you remember, you get yeah. the whole thing for uh, $11. That's a good, that's pretty yeah. cheap. That is true. Um, that is yeah, true. Beef, it's kind of not too much, you know. Uh, beef, maybe a big chuck, a big chuck. Uh, steak yeah. or something like Chuck that. Chuck roast. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But they're they're kind of high still right now. But I would I would say 
I mean, it sounds crazy, but leg quarters. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. You can feel a lot of people with that. Hey, uh, Chris Aguino, Aguin, Aguiniano, however, uh, Chris has a question. Do you ever use a wet marinade or just dry rubs? Who? Me? Yes, you. I agree, um, Travis. I don't marinate. I don't really marinate anything. Um, uh, the, 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 I just made, in fact, the video, I'll finish it after we're done. But I made Jamaican jerk chicken. Now, I marinated that. Mm -hmm. because i wanted the stuff to go in there but uh generally i i don't marinate too much the stuff kind of stuff i cook you know yeah yeah your favorite I, steak to cook uh, um i like porterhouse and uh t-bones i like ribeyes yeah. too i like all of them yeah. <laughs> but yeah yeah it's hard, I, I like, it's hard to pick today yeah, the, the, the thing about the porterhouse um, and the T-bones, if we get back to the guy talking about the grill grates, they're hard yeah. to grill on the grill gate because that bone stops. Of the bone, and you can't, yeah. And the meat shrinks up and you can't get those. So uh, does it, have you ever cut the meat off first and then cook each piece? I don't think I ever have, no. That, that would work, right? I'm not right? a big T-bone guy, man. I mean, you got yeah. two totally different steaks there. They're both great, but... I mean, I, I like to cook ribeyes and I like to cook New York's and yeah. um, pretty much that's it. Lately, I've been on this uh, strip kick, man. I, oh, I nice. really like New York strips. I like the yeah. beefy flavor. They're not as moist or as juicy as a ribeye. Right. Man, they got a really good flavor, a meaty flavor. I really like them a lot. Hey, uh, when you come down here, get some of those uh, Chuck. Chuck eyes. Good, he's whack. Kind of losing you. Hold on. Come on back, Chapo. Chapo, Chapo, Chapo. Did we lose you? Uh, Luke Castro says he's looking for some pork liver. Man, I never even knew that was a thing. Pork liver. I'm going to have to try some of that, babe. Got to get yeah, it from somewhere. Some. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm going to take Sapo out for Can a second. Can anybody see me? Oh, boy. Hang on. Are you there? I could see. That case. Yeah, you're, we're kind of losing your, your audio. It's like cutting out or, or something. Oh, man. Uh, it seems like your connection kind of suddenly got a little shaky. I don't know if it's. Twitter. Yeah, it's probably just the internet. Uh, Luke Castro so wants there to know. Can see and hear me. Picture, picture. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, but your uh, your visual, your video's not moving at all. But I can hear you. Oh no, I think it. There you go. You must have spectrum like I do. <laughs> yeah. Gone. There he went. <laughs> uh, let's see if he comes back here in a little bit. If he does, we'll put him back on. Folks, thank you so much. It's been an hour anyway and 10 minutes almost we've been on. Uh, hopefully he can get back in. I can add him if he clicks back in. Um, Sapo, uh, let me send him a text telling him he can click the same link in case just so he can at least say goodbye. Um, Oh, yes, the wonders of electronics, computers, and internet. When they work, they're amazing. But when they don't work, we're all in trouble. <laughs> it's all good, though. Lou, I guess, uh, you know, hook up with um, Sapo Man and maybe get you some of them livers. And maybe I get some of those, man. I don't know what you guys do with them. Uh, we'll have to freaking hook up and do something with that. Uh, before uh, we came on, I was talking to, to Sapo and... Uh, we were talking about doing a little demo up there at Borycraft Lou, and, and he was like, why don't you and Lou come up together and 
y'all do something together, you know, and, and save on the fuel and whatever. So that's an idea. I hadn't thought about that, but I mean, I'm game if you're game, bro. Uh, let's put a date together here soon. There he is. Let's see. Here he comes. Sorry about that. And he's back. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened, man. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know if you heard me. Luke Castro wants some of those uh, pork livers. I never even knew that was a thing, man. T tell him when he goes to Moody's to ask him. They have it. All right, cool. I'll do that. Mark Scroggs uh, says he's describing the – you're describing the Adui well. Yeah. Uh, he says he's originally from Louisiana and – Live at Julio Boudin. <laughs> he buys it when he goes down, but uh, I'm able to buy it here in Southwest Missouri too. I got to try that one of these days. When you come down here, man, uh, we'll make some. You need okay. to come down here one of these days and just hang hey, out. Uh, tell, tell Mark that uh, there's a new rice in Louisiana called Parish Rice, uh, parishrice.com, and it's a uh, high protein and low glycemic index, and people with diabetes can eat the rice. Wow. And nice. uh, I, I bought a 50, uh, I think a 50 pound bag. I bought a big old bag, man, because uh, it, it doesn't shoot your sugar up. Everybody's buying it, the people that have really? diabetes. Yeah. Interesting. That's good to know. Good to know if you're a, a diabetic or something like that. I ran into a guy at Sam's yesterday that has a page for diabetics. Uh, I'll uh -huh. try to remember it and, and, and I'll post it. Uh, sounds pretty yeah, par Parish. It's like the like a county parish, like a you know, like a church, the parish, yeah, yeah, parishrice.com. Yeah. Parish rice. That's interesting. Yeah. Hey, Monty Page wants to know if you've ever smoked what they call a steamship roast. They used to do them a lot, but they're hard to find now. I never heard of it. Do you, what is I've it? I've never heard of that either. What, what part of the cow? I don't have no idea. Uh, maybe Monty can shed some light on that. David, I'm with you, bro. Boom, it's beer time. I'm going to tell my wife to go yeah. bring me one. I need a beer, honey. Oh, uh. Hey, thanks for telling me about that tequila, man. That brand, it's really good. Hey, that's good. good. I just bought another bottle two days ago. That's good stuff. Man. I got the biggest one they have, uh, the Anejo. And uh -huh. man, it, it's not high price and it's really good. Thank you, Chris. Tapu says thank you too. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see. Glenn, Glenda Lee says she can hear you, no visual. Okay, they're kind of running a little bit behind from where we're at. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mark. I agree. Been a good show. We'll be signing off here shortly. Uh, we still got a couple more questions. Let me try and get to those real quick. Um, Rogers back says, um, you know, thanks for the videos. Loves watching and learning barbecue and techniques. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate that, brother. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Hope to see you yeah, soon. Thank, thank you. Um, and Monty Page says, um, it's the whole hind leg of a beef. Oh, wow. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I, if I was to cook something like that, it's going to be in the big pro pit, and it's going to yeah. be for a party, man. We're going to have a lot of people over to eat, for sure. Oh, uh, I was going to tell people that uh, Moody's, they have the, it's called bone-in sirloin. Mm -hmm. It's a piece of meat this big, and has four, four meats in there. It has tri-tip. It has picanha. It has sirloin and it has center sirloin, and no wow. one has those. It's awesome. What's it called? Bone in sirloin, and uh, in sirloin. Unbelievable. Yeah, you can cut the pieces out or you can cook the whole thing, uh -huh. and it's only like seven bucks a pound, man. Wow. Have to try that one. Oh yeah, to tell that guy that go get one of those for that <laughs> contest. That'd be good. Yeah. Did you hear that, Monty? That sounds like a good idea too, but you got to um, have a butcher. That that you got to have a butcher that will uh, butcher the. That whole. knows what to do too with that as well. Yeah. It takes a butcher, no doubt about it. All yeah. right, folks, um, we've been on here for a little over an hour. Uh, wanted to just take a couple yeah. of minutes to say thank you very much, Sapa. You got any last minute advice or tips, um, tricks? I think there's a lot of guys that watch that are kind of new, uh, yeah. learning to barbecue. I get a lot of questions all the time. Uh, give them three things to do, three tips to be able to cook great barbecue, and then we'll shut it down. Okay. Um, um, and I just blindsided you with that. <laughs> okay. It's okay. I'm trying. Uh, tip number one, make sure you have plenty of cerveza. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Cuz you're going to be chilling out. You're going to you're going to chill out. You don't want to get in a hurry. Also, mm -hmm. make snacks. Have food to eat while you're cooking so you don't get in a hurry. And uh pretty much that's the third one, don't get in a hurry. And 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 we're going to throw in number 4. There you go. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. I agree with them before. I agree with all of it. <laughs> yeah, yes. you know what? That's a real good. Hey, but that's a really good point about the snacks because a lot of times we're cooking and, uh, yeah. you know, if you're cooking something that takes a while and everybody's always hungry, like, hey, man, when are the meat yeah. going to be ready? Whatever, you know. So that's a yeah. great idea. And I usually try to make something small ahead of time, too. That way it's like, here you go, here you go. I, I throw sausage in there yeah. for that very reason because then you can snack on it and it's, it's quick. And we can yeah. let the ribs go or the chicken or the brisket or whatever. Man. That's a great, Pop, great tip. Popper, poppers, uh, yep. sausage, those moink balls or whatever, the bacon around the little meatballs, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah and just snack yeah, on that's that. that's a good idea. Awesome. And don't, don't, don't be staring. And, oh, and don't open. Don't keep opening it. Taking pictures <laughs> for TikTok. <laughs> yeah. uh, steamship. Uh, David Denham says that the steamship cut is a full round, excluding the Inked, inked bone and part of the rum. I was a butcher in Victoria at Newman Food Store and Country Slaughterhouse. Many oh, wow. Ago. That's a great, great explanation. Oh, yeah. Thank you, David. Appreciate that very much. Hey, in Victoria, Texas, Newman. Victoria, your hometown. Yeah, <laughs> I used to live there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, man. All right. Uh, Sapo, I mean, I right. really appreciate you hanging out with us, man. We'll yeah. have to be back another time because me and you got a lot to talk about. All yeah, uh, tell the people that I got this program and I'll try to have my shows. I'm going to, I'm thinking about hosting some guys too. It's pretty yeah, cool. Absolutely. Pretty cool, man. You go for it, man. Yeah, so. it's just fun to talk barbecue. We kind of have the same hobby and the same passion for food and stuff. And, and yeah, uh, so definitely it's, yeah good deal man thanks for joining fun. us i uh, really yeah, appreciate it uh, very appreciate, much thanks, and thank uh you. look forward to hanging out and cooking some barbecue and drinking a couple of beers oh one, one more thing one more thing this place right here there you um go. it's in corpus christi it's a brand new butcher shop it's on staple street yes down towards downtown towards a, a <laughs> courthouse but you gotta go by there man it's utterly amazing that's just all I got to say. Just go by and check it out, everybody, if you're in Corpus. All right, cool. Yeah, and they stock my products there, too. They have the WoW and the OG. They sell quite a bit of it there. So oh, thank yeah. you, Morraycraft, for uh, supporting us and letting your customers uh, come and buy our products at your store. Thank you very, very much. Okay. All right, brother, we're going to chill out and because uh, I don't want to uh, jump on uh, the Social Smoking Gooder Show too much either. They're on right yeah. now. They started at 8. I'm probably going to go watch that for a little while. Okay. But, uh, thanks for hanging out. Enjoyed it very much, Sapo, and uh, right, look, see you down the trail. Here that soon. <laughs> All right. All, All right. Bye, everybody. everybody. Good, night. good night. All right, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. That was a really good conversation. Sapo is a fun dude, man. And really, folks, go follow his channels. Uh, he's on YouTube. He's on TikTok. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. He's on all of those. And... Um, Hang on. Uh, I don't know what I did there, but okay, cool. Um, guys, uh, thank you again. Uh, I was trying to, to uh, log, log him out, but he's uh, in the background there. Thanks a, thanks a bunch, guys. Had a real good time. Appreciate all the questions. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Uh, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow, I believe. I don't have an exact time yet. I'll, I'll have to check with him in the morning. Tomorrow, we're going to do a live, uh, and uh, not a... 100% sure what we're going to do, but I got a couple ideas already. Got some meat already thought over there, so y'all come see us. We're also going to have an interview with Richard Ansaldua from Hill Country Barbecue Supply. He's a really good friend of mine. We've done, I think, three classes with him in Central Texas. Uh, just a super knowledgeable, super cool dude. He promotes one of the biggest cook-offs in Texas, the Hill Country Barbecue Shootout in Lockhart, Texas. Uh, the last few years, it's an awesome cook-off, one that's on my, uh, one that I want to win, that I've been a few times, and I think I've got the best I've ever done, it's like third overall, but um, we just haven't got there yet, but hopefully this year is our turn, we'll see, um, but anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with us, thanks for all the support, thanks for the love and the stars and all the good things you guys do for us and safe about us and with us, um, y'all remember to keep the smoke light and make it work, boom, a lot of wow and OG, thank you, folks. Good night.